Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. This is part five of our coverage of the SpaceX Dragon 2 Demo 2 launch and docking at the International Space Station. Part one, the launch, was covered in short 18. Part two, the docking, was covered in short 19. And part three, the speeches, was covered in short 20. With part four, the booster, covered in short 21. Links to all four can be found below. This part serves as an introduction to the Dragon 2 capsule, serial number C206, used by the Demo 2 mission astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin on their May 30th, 2020 launch and May 31st, 2020 rendezvous with the International Space Station. The Demo 2 mission is the first performed by an American spacecraft from the United States in nine years and is the first to be designed, built, and conducted by a commercial company. SpaceX. The Dragon 2 is so named because it is the crew variant of the Cargo Dragon freighter, also known as the Dragon 1. SpaceX started designing the freighter in 2008 and subsequently received a development contract for the crew version in 2011. Boeing received its development contract for a crew capsule, dubbed the CST-100 Starliner, in 2010 and attempted an unmanned test flight in 2019. The test flight experienced software glitches that prevented the spacecraft from reaching the ISS and was subsequently grounded by NASA for remediation with a second test flight mandated later in 2020. SpaceX's unmanned test flight, dubbed Demo-1, was conducted in March of 2019 and it was a success. Not all preparations went perfectly, however. The Demo-1 capsule exploded a month later during a static fire test of the Super Draco abort system necessitating a second static fire test of the abort system in November 2019. That abort test and the subsequent in-flight abort test succeeded, clearing the way for the Demo-2 mission. The Demo-2 mission, in spite of the astronauts' casual attitudes and relaxed appearance, was not risk-free. Catastrophic destruction during the launch was calculated as a 1 in 276 risk by NASA, well within design parameters, but obviously not zero. Mission failure like that experienced by the Starliner unmanned test was computed to be one in 60. At 21,000 pounds, the Dragon 2 is only two thirds of the mass of the Apollo capsule last flown in 1975, although the newer spacecraft offers 50% more in pressurized cabin space. This is partially due to the fact that the Dragon 2 is designed for seven astronauts, although NASA only intends on using it for four at most. The Apollo's capacity was three. Of course, the Demo-2 mission was for only two astronauts. The backup astronaut, Dr. Kiel Lindgren, was slated to be only in the capsule if Benkin or Hurley were sidelined. Once the Demo-2 capsule was orbiting Earth and Benkin and Hurley had doffed their spacesuits, the two astronaut crew gave an impromptu video tour of the interior of their capsule. Let's check it out. Well, everyone, welcome aboard Dragon. Uh, my name is Doug. Next to me is uh, Bob. You probably know him. We're so glad to be with you uh, this evening and uh, welcome you on board uh, Dragon. Got a couple uh, things we want to talk about first before we kind of show you around. The first is uh, kind of a tradition we've had uh, over the years with spacecraft going way back to the uh, Mercury era. Uh, and then a tradition that's been carried on ever since with uh, all our space vehicles, including the Soyuz. Uh, we uh, were, were given the honor to name uh, this capsule. I know most of you uh, at SpaceX especially know it as Capsule 206, but uh, I think uh, all of us thought that we could maybe do a little bit better than that. So. Uh, without further ado, we would like to uh, welcome you aboard Capsule Endeavor. Uh, we chose Endeavor for a few reasons. One, because of this incredible Endeavor uh, NASA, SpaceX, and the United States has been on uh, since the end of the shuttle program back in 2011. The other reason we named it Endeavor is a little more personal to Bob and I. Uh, we both had our first flights on Shuttle Endeavor, and uh, it just meant so much to us to carry on that name. Uh, that's what we decided to go with. So we hope you enjoy that name, and once again, welcome on board. 
Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome aboard Endeavour, the uh, SpaceX vehicle headed to the International Space Station. Uh, today, we accomplished the first flight off the Florida coast in uh, quite some time, and Doug and I were really proud to have an opportunity to be a part of that. Uh, we're doing it in a brand new uh, spaceship, a spaceship that's a lot different than its namesake uh, Endeavour, the space shuttle, in that it has uh, touch display screens that allow us to accomplish most of the interfacing requirements that we have. We'll have uh, if Doug pans over and points at the display in front of me, you can see the, the forward view that we had uh, uh, during the maneuvers that we most recently did. You can look out the window. It looks like the centerline camera doesn't have a lot of content on it now. We're kind of pointed into space so that the windows can see the Earth below us. But we've got the capability to interface with the vehicle, and it's kind of interesting. There's a command. This little button over here is actually what the commands are for our displays. One thing that does get lost is there is a uh, extensive uh, button panel down below as well. So over on uh, this side, we can turn the displays on and off, as well as send some commands for some contingency situations. Uh, on the other side, we have the ability to uh, deploy shoots and things like that on entry. So uh, we do have some buttons, but the primary interface is uh, these displays. So nice, new, modern cockpit that we've got for our, our uh, compared to our namesake, the Space Shuttle uh, Endeavor. I'm going to migrate a little bit away from our seats here, and Doug from his seat is going to continue to try to follow me so you can tell what can be seen from the, the seat that he sits in. So from his seat, when he is inside the, in the vehicle strapped in, this is what his view actually looks like. You can see a, a window off to the one side. We each have a window that we can view out and, and see what's going on outside. That was exciting on Ascent for us to be able to see the, the arm rotate away from the pad, and that's when we both, I think, knew that we were uh, going to launch today. So that was, that was super cool. I've got one on my side uh, as well. Uh, the hatch that we came in is the hatch that's uh, right behind me. It is a little bit of a tight quarters, uh, but I'm going to uh, try to uh, demonstrate some of the capability that we have now that we're in zero gravity. So I think I was requested to do a backflip. I'm going to kind of do a side spin, which is a little bit of a permutation on that request. So hopefully you can see what it's like to actually float in zero gravity. And uh, Doug and I are super excited that we got the opportunity to do this again today, uh, even before the end of May. So that was super cool. We did. It, in, it turns out end up with one stowaway on board our uh, vehicle when we launched today. It was not uh, uh, just Doug and I who uh, accomplished the launch here. We do have uh, an Apatosaurus aboard. We both have two boys uh, who are super interested in dining. And uh, we collected up all the dinosaurs between the two houses, and Trimmer, the Apatosaurus, uh, got the vote from the boys to make the trip into space today with us. And so that uh, was a super cool thing for us to get a chance to do for both of our sons, who I, I hope are super excited to see uh, their toys floating around with us on board. I'm sure they would rather be here uh, given the opportunity, but hopefully they're proud of this as well. Okay, uh, as we work our way towards one of the windows, uh, unfortunately it's getting a little bit dark, but uh, I don't know if Bob can pan over here. We're now, we just passed off of the coast of Newfoundland and we're headed over to, uh, or over the Atlantic right now. I don't know if you can uh, get a good picture of that. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoy that view um, as we pass over the Atlantic. And uh, I think with that, we will work ourselves back into the seats and uh, wrap things up for this evening. So Doug's there uh, making a nice big smile for the camera. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the trip today with us on board the uh, Dragon Capsule Endeavor with our friend Trimmer, the Apatosaurus, 
uh, and Doug and I, we just would like to uh, thank SpaceX, we'd like to thank NASA, and we'd like to thank the, uh, the American people for the opportunity today. And we're really proud of the entire team that was able to accomplish human space flight again from the Florida coast. Uh, just a wonderful experience. Uh, Doug and I are just so proud to be a part of it. And just uh, want to thank uh, everybody who gave us uh, this opportunity and worked so hard uh, to make this happen today. The Dragon 2 is intended to be reusable, although it is not clear to what extent this is or for how many uses. Certain mechanical parts of the capsule and the parachutes are single use and must be replaced, and the Pika X heat shield may need replacing if damaged by salt water or ablation. The first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket is designed for 10 uses, but of course this is not exactly the same thing. Regardless, NASA will require a new capsule be built for each of its manned missions. The cost of one Dragon 2 capsule is not publicly available, so it is not clear whether this is a trivial cost or a significant expense. In 2012, SpaceX publicly revealed their mission target cost to be $160 million, which includes the Falcon 9 launch vehicle as well as the Dragon 2 capsule and the operation of Launch Center 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. This would be $40 million per astronaut, or less than half the $90 million NASA just contracted for a 2020 Soyuz seat. NASA's follow-up to the Demo-2 mission is USCV-1 in August of 2020. Dragon 2 crew capsule serial number C207 is the spacecraft slated for that launch. The final mission of the Dragon 1 freighter was conducted in March of 2020, so a Dragon 2 in a freighter configuration will be launched in October 2020 for the CRS-21 ISS resupply mission. The first fully commercial flight of a Dragon 2 could occur as early as 2021. Bigelow Aerospace was originally a likely candidate as they had actually launched a demonstration module to the ISS. However, Bigelow shut down at the beginning of the pandemic and is not expected to reopen. Another possibility is startup Axiom Space, a company that hopes to design commercial-only modules for the ISS and has ambitious plans for its own space station. Assuming it lands the necessary investors, Axiom is hoping to launch its first ISS module in 2024 and wants to train private astronauts on the ISS in anticipation of that milestone. That concludes our brief on the Dragon 2 Demo 2 crew capsule. Be sure to check out the links below to previous space industry related episodes and our other content. We hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for part 6 in our series on the Dragon 2 Demo 2 launch and docking.